Yeah, hi everyone. This is how I went this week. Yeah, not too bad. I went up 746 ranks this week, which is pretty good. Back in the top th- top 8,000. Um, just under a just under 10,000 for the round rank, which is okay. Um, so let me know how you guys went. I'm interested to know. There's a few things that you know went my way, and there's a few things that didn't. So we'll talk about the defence. Jordan Dawson, 93, a little disappointing, below his season average. I mean, you can't expect to be perfect every game, but you want at least get 100 for a play of his price and his caliber. Uh, not, a, not a disaster score. He's actually been fairly consistent this season, which is why he went over, went up to 600k. So look, uh, 93, that's his floor. That's good. So, I mean, that's pretty good if it's at, that's his floor. Uh, Dale 105, yeah, just a standard, you know, score from Dale. Nothing over the top, nothing disappointing. You know, he's fairly consistent, so yeah, that's what you're going to get from Dale. Uh, Doherty 73, yeah, disappointing. I um, mean, I brought him in for Hewitt, which I was thinking, uh, should I pay out for Sicily, Sicily or a Sinclair? And I don't think I, I don't think I could afford a Sinclair. Probably more I'd have just been able to afford a Sicily, but. Sicily, I think he's gone down this week because he had a mediocre game himself. Look, 73 is not what you want. You know, I want around about 100 at least. And just, yeah, can't one. I mean, a few of the other players play pretty well. The other uh, main players, like Walsh, yeah. Cripps played well, which is good. We'll talk about him in a mini. But, you know, it's disappointing from Doherty. Hopefully he performs well. I think Saar took... Full well in the future. I think Saar took his kickings as well, uh, um, which might have impacted his score. Hopefully, you know, Doherty performs well in the f- for the final stretch. Otherwise, it's looking to going to be a, it's going to be difficult to crack into that top five thousand. Uh, Jad and Short, seventy six, disappointing. He may have to go. Him and Crisp, Crisp just been disappointing a lot this second half of the season. You know, considering Collingwood won, I thought he might have, might be might be might have scored a bit higher. He had an okay first half, but then dropped after that. So these two have been overall failed of a picks. You know, if you trade them out at the buyers, so even just before then, it would have been looking like a good option to do so. I should never have gotten short. I got bad into that. I was quite confident with Cresp. Like he had a decent season last year, but but I think the, uh, this season, I think Nick Dacos has impacted his scoring, his role a bit. Uh, I think he won, did he win the best of Ferris last season for Collingwood? I think he did. And he got 11 Brownlow votes, I'm pretty sure, as well. So, yeah, look, he had a great season last season. I don't think he's going to beat that again, to be honest. I could be wrong, though. And I probably won't be safe electing him next year. Same with Short. I was never really sold on him, but everyone picks him. Same with Whitfield, and it's just... I'm not following it, copying everyone again if I don't feel quite com- confident with it. I'm just not doing that again. It's just stuffed up my whole back line. And I'll pretty much, uh, yeah, Ulan, i uh, use him as a loophole to bring a West score, which again, he started off well, got like 50 at half time, where, and I thought he's going to get an 80 or 90, and at the end of this didn't quite go through. With my defence, it's just been an absolute crap show. Only one play went over 100 and he only barely made it, Dale. So, yeah, I think him and, and Dawson got 90 as well. Him and they're the only two that we went above 90, which is disappointing and which is why I think which is my round rank wasn't higher. It would have been quite a fair bit higher if my defence showed up. And it's just really let me down all season. My defence is just yeah, no good. But Tom Stewart, oh, he will come in next week for the finals, and hopefully I can bring home, uh, come home strong and crack the top five thousand with him coming in into my side because I'm not a lot of not a lot of people have him now, and those coaches who saved onto him hopefully will make it worth it. So look, I wanted to save trades, and I reckon maybe hopefully benefit me if a few of the other top defenders get injured like a Sicily or a Sinclair that I don't own. You know, if they can get injured, I don't know, really, it's not really a nice thing to say, but it's the only way I can probably catch up. 
And in terms of the midfield, well, Oliver, 96. Disappointed if you had him as a VC or captain score. I think he did okay in the first half, but he dropped off a bit in the second half. Like quite a few of my players. And yeah, I'm glad I didn't pick the VC or captain option. I wasn't confident in at all because he just came off an injury. And look, he's playing against the Bulldogs, which, you know, for good midfield, it's going to be tough to get points in the midfield. And I was right in the end. And yeah, look, it was one of those things I got right this week. And picking lead, 140, which was a second best option. Uh, Miller out scored him, but wasn't that much, not wasn't that much to be honest. And I took the right option again this week. Not pretty happy again. We've got the captaincy score, the VC option right the last couple of weeks. And Laird, he's just been phenomenal. In fact, he's almost the top scorer this season in terms of average anyway. Look, he's only just off Oliver. And Oliver's 7'10", and Laird 6'8", 6. Eight, six. So, yeah, he's performed well this season. It's probably one of his best seasons, to be honest. Uh, hopefully, uh, he can continue this form. Uh, his side's been a bit disappointing though, Adelaide. Uh, Miller, 157. Happy with that. Uh, phenomenal job for Miller. Always got Gold Coast over the line. They just faded out in the last quarter. But again, he's just been phenomenal for the Suns and really helped them grow over the last few seasons. How contri- contributed to their side. Yeah, 157. So just below a few, a few of these other players with Oliver and Laird. Yeah, look, good stuff. Good score. He's more expensive than Neil now. Neil's dropped below 600k, and I think it, I think he was over 700k at one point. It would have been close to it if he wasn't. Yeah, he's dropped off a bit. Look, 123 is okay, but it's not his best. Uh, McRae at 95. His second half of the season has been pretty poor, to be honest, from his standards. Had a great first half, and I think was one of the more expensive players at one point. Now he's just dropped off a cliff a bit. Uh, and it's look, looking like a mediocre pick this season. I mean, everyone has him now, so it's not really a big deal, but it's, it's one of those players you thought, oh, he would get like an average of 125 plus, or at least 120, and he could still get over an average of 120. Don't know about 125 plus. Has to have a couple of phenomenal games. I just don't see it with the Bulldogs midfield. Just, you know, they've got too many midfielders. Uh, Mills, 97, disappointing. Again, there's another list of disappointing players this round. Failed to make the 100, which annoys me, because uh, Sydney did win, but you know he didn't really get the large score that I was expecting from him, sitting there playing Adelaide. I was expecting like minimum 120, and he failed to do that. So I'm not too sure with Mills. Uh, depending on the fixture and how he goes, he's a bit of a roller coaster pick. He can get like 200, but then get dish out like a 70. I think even a 62, I think he's got... I think this season too at some point. So look, he's still a great player, but he's not as consistent as some of these other players up here, like a Rory Laird, for an example, which is probably been the most consistent midfielder. I would say he hasn't really put a foot wrong, hasn't scored a poor score like some of these other midfielders have. Uh, though to be fair, I think slowing out too has helped Laird. Uh, Brace Shaw, one of the more disappointing performances in my side. To be honest, it's let me down because not everyone owns Brayshaw, and you keep beating him with a like a, a Walsh or a Merritt, and unfortunately I lost out this week with them two scoring well, or well, scoring okay. I think Merritt was looking to get a phenomenal score, one fifty plus, before he dropped out a bit. He probably should, if Essendon won it, he probably got one fifty, but. Um, as in terms of Brayshaw, he, he had a great first half again and just fell off the cliff in the second half. Sort of the opposite of McRae. McRae actually finished a bit stronger, but he had a crap first half. So it's a bit of an opposite sides with these two players here. Really, Brayshaw should have gotten 100, you know, at least from the considering the first half he had. So very frustrating. You get he's a young player, but. I think Brayshaw too, well impact his scoring too. Uh, not Brayshaw, I mean Fife, what am I talking about? Um, Cripps, 118, which is good. A lot of people trade him out, which I don't think was a week to do it because they had GWS, which have been a bit of a poor side this season. So holding him has been a good decision for this round, but 
it's one of those picks that could he could drop a seventy or a sixty, and it's just uh, so I'll probably hold him on to, onto him for now. Just don't know which midfield to bring in. Maybe Steele, but he's probably going to go up in price. Uh, it's just one of those picks. I'm probably just going to have to keep him for the rest of the season and just forget about it. In terms of the cover, yeah, Greg Clark didn't play. He's probably a fringe player. I mean, West Coast got this. Oh, it's the main side back in there. So it's, it's probably not going to get a game unless an emergency happens or a few players are out of form. Rioli, he's got a game, but 21's not good enough. He's actually lost value and he's under 200k. So, yeah, he's probably been a bit of a flop. I'll have him as an emergency option because he's got really no one else. I think Greg Clark's a better scorer, but he's not really getting a game. Rioli's another fringe play, maybe dropped after that. You can dish out an 80, but like get like a 20 Rioli. And it's just, I get he's young. It's more about his position. It's not really got the best role at all. It's probably one of the worst roles, to be honest. Uh, Owens, he's probably not going to play again. And Darcy, uh, 93, a little disappointing. Uh, considering Richmond uh, didn't, didn't re- Ruckman didn't really let, let the word on fire. I was expecting to get at least 100. Or nearly every week, hopefully. But yeah, look, disappointing. Not the best. Not a disaster, though. Better than some of the other players, as we've seen in my side. Riley O'Boran, 101. That's okay. It's another standard score. Not his best, not his worst. Definitely better than last week, which is good. He had scored wits, which is good because a lot of the top players have wits. Or top teams, I should say, have wits. So I do gain a bit of advantage over that. So it's just, yeah. With Rux, it's a bit frustrating this season. So I'm not going to go too much into detail with that. That's not the reason why I've performed not as well as what I was hoping this year. No, it's not been my weakness this season. Uh, in terms of uh, forwards, Montepelli had a phenomenal last two weeks and he's finally performing a lot better now after having a, you know, not the, not the best first half of the season. And it looks like we've brought him in at the right time. I was expecting him to you know, a good second half of the season, it was right. 161, if you had him as a VC or a captain option, you'd be laughing. 161, yeah, take it. But a lot of people have him now, so you're not really going to gain advantage unless you haven't brought him in now, which, it's, yeah, if you haven't brought him in now, it's probably a little too late, unfortunately. Uh, 98 from here, at Parker, which is okay, I guess. Everyone has him, so it's not a big deal. He's yeah, he's been a bit average the last few weeks. Hasn't lit the world on fire. Hasn't get the, like the one thirties or one forties like he has in the past. And he hasn't been quite the player this season. He's had a few good games, but he's also had a few average games. But as I stated before, a lot of people have him, so it's not a big deal. And English one twenty two, a lot better this week, which is great considering I brought him in the last week. And if you brought him in this week, that'd be great because. You know, you got him at a cheaper price, but now he's gone down to 520. So there's that for you. Uh, Will Brody, 95, a little disappointing. But like I said, a lot of the top players or top teams have him. Brody, it's not a big deal. I mean, five's back in the team, so it may impact his scoring. And Heaney, 106. Been a bit better the last few weeks. And hopefully can perform well the next few weeks. Otherwise, I put Belly Smith as an option, but there's just too many Bulldogs players, and it's like, should I go with Smith? And you got Tro, you got um, what's his name, Liberatore. I just don't know. It might be my final trade if I was going and looking to it, but I'm just going to hold for trades for a lot of for a variety of reasons, like with Hewitt going out. It's just a lot of unexpected things. And in terms of the bench, 52 Curtis, that's okay. 280, she's like what 100k more than Rioli. And I don't, not, not too sure who's more owned, but you know, Curtis has been an okay in terms of a backup option or a rookie option. He's done actually better than a few other highly talented rookies out there actually this season that we're expected to do well. Uh, yeah, this yeah look this week's not too bad. Look, I still went up the ranks. I'm not going to complain. Better than quite a few other sides, but. It's just, you know, players like bringing in Doherty and performing poorly is just not what I wanted. It's just 
my defence has just let me down this season. Other than probably bringing in Dawson, but I didn't start with him. I started with him instead of um, we feel that it should have worked with my gut earlier on and it would have saved me a bit. Even though Dawson did perform that well early on, he still would have been better than Whitfield. And not starting Hewitt originally it just cost me cost me dearly. And again, it's just a bit of luck. You know, Sicily, I'm all able to bring him in too, maybe in the last few rounds if no injuries happen. Because uh, he's going to drop down in price. That's all right. It's just Sinclair and just killed me a little bit. Uh, but Stuart comes back in, so I'll look, I'll bring him in. And it's probably, yeah, short and crisp. It's probably the ones I might most likely get rid of. If I was going to do a trade, a gamble trade, which I won't do this week for a, right, a lot of reasons that could be laid out. So, if I was, I'm maybe a Sicily, depending how much money I have. Since these two have gone down, it's a bit frustrating. Uh, and annoying, you probably want at least these short and crisp getting 100 in terms of the bench, yeah, 300k, I could probably even do it and bring him in, but we'll wait and see. I won't do it this round unless something chaotic happens with trades and, it's, yeah, with all the chaos that goes on this season. Anyway, thank you for watching. Leave a comment below on your performance this round, and thank you for watching.